Line six. Taiyang Bing. Fa Ru Ar Ke. Taiyang illness. Fa Ru emitting heat and as well as having thirst. Wu Han Zhe. With no aversion to cold. Those who have no aversion to cold have thirst and are showing heat. Wei Wen Bing. This is a Wen Bing, a febrile illness. It's important to understand that I talked about this idea of context. Everybody read the same books in terms of your, your education as a child to be an educated person. And even though we can say that there are enough Chinese medicine books to sweat an ox or be pillars in your house, it's a Chinese expression, right? That in the end, there's actually only a few books that every single person guaranteed read if they were the great practitioners, the serious practitioners. The Neijing, the Nanjing, the Shanghan, the Jinghui, uh, Sun Sun Miao, Wai Tai, and then it depends where they are later on in history, if the books existed or not. But every single person would have read Nei Nan Shanghan, right? They would have read the Neijing, the Nanjing, and the Shanghan Zabing Lun, which includes both the Shanghan and the Jinghui. So if you know this, then when you choose a name to a book, it's always in reference to something else. So this is the Shanghan Lun, and then you go all the way into the Qing Dynasty, the last dynasty before modern times, and you have the One Bing School, the Warm Febrile Diseases, and you have the great book, which is called One Bing Tiao Dian, um, Treatise on Warm Febrile Diseases. And the name was picked on purpose. It's a yin yang. You've got Shanghan, now you've got Wen Bing. Okay? When we get to the end, please remind me to talk to you about where Shanghan comes from. Because please do not think struck by cold means you have cold. There are many kinds of cold diseases that include heat. It's all from the Neijing. And this idea of a Wen Bing, less stressed at this point because we're going to be reading so much, but when they were saying, what are these illnesses that are being treated that we're not seeing successfully? And then someone went, it's a one bing, Shang Han Lun, line six. Here it is. This is where the one bing source came from. It didn't come from on their own. They didn't pull it out of the air. They weren't saying things are different. Now. I mean, what a cop out when people say that, oh, well, illnesses are different today than it was in the old days. So they're seeing different things. So you need different formulas. You know, if you pick up the one bing Taobian, Treaties on Warm Febrile Diseases. Open up the book. First formula or second formula is wager time. Why? Number one, homage to this book. Number two, don't misdiagnose. Just because they've got heat doesn't mean it's not a wager time formula. And then if it's gone into the lungs, if it's hot in the lungs, then you can use the, the one being formulas. And you go through, and if you start going through the Wen Bing Chao Bian, you're going to keep coming into Shanghai Lin formulas. Bai Hu Tang, White Tiger Decoction, all of this. It's not a separate book with its own formulas. It is a looking at this, what I'm about to read, as well as what was going on, and then finding formulas that worked, including formulas from the Shanghai Lun. It is not like it's a rebellion against this book. It is a expansion or a seeing of a yin-yang relationship more than this book. So, Wei Wen Bing. We have Taiyang illness. What does that mean? It's got to be the Taiyang, so we're going to have a floating pulse. It's going to be head symptoms. That defines it. And it should have cold. But grammatically in Chinese, if we go back to this line, what is the first line? Taiyang zhe wei bing. Mai fu jiang tong. Uh, mai fu tou xiang jiang tong. Are. As well as, and also, Wuhan. There is aversion to cold. But it's and also an addendum. The core symptoms are floating pulse and the illness is in the head. So, line six. Taiyang illness, they have to have a floating pulse. We're going to have head symptoms. Let's not miss that. They're putting out heat and they're thirsty. They are do not have an aversion to cold. This is a one being. The commentary. They've got heat. They're putting out heat and thirsty. This, and they have no version to cold. Yang Ming Ye, right? Isn't this Yang Ming? Right? They've got heat and thirst. We really want to diagnose this as Yang Ming. We've been trained to. At least, if you're not careful, you've been trained to. So, 
Heat, heat. What is it? The four bigs. You can tell the four bigs, the four bigs. You got all these things. You got heat. If there's cold, it's early onset. It's Taiyang. It's Guizhou. It's Ma Huang. But of course, by the time they get to you, it doesn't work. Or my favorite is when people take Guizhou Tang in pills and then pop them with hot water and go about their day. And then they say, oh, yeah, it didn't work. I didn't get to it in time. I went out, never, I will go on a long rant again about the proper way to take Gui Tang in the intro seminar, and I'll do it again. But it had nothing to do with early onset, and then it moved on, which is why it didn't work for you. You just didn't take Gui Tang, even though it said it on the bottle. So, um, this, we might be mistaken. He's not saying mistaken, but we suddenly have these things, Yang Ming Ye, but this, Ci, Tai Yang Shou Xie, this is the Tai Yang has received the pernicious. The pernicious is at the Tai Yang layer. And so we know this as a warm, as a febrile disease, a warm disease. This is not damaged by cold. So, a gathering of the warmth grows into, becomes heat. This heat, this warmth grows, grows, grows until it's heat. There was no cold, a straight warmth going to heat, leading to uh, emitting heat and being thirsty. No aversion to cold. Here's the bullet. Pay attention to this whole next rant because it's the first thing of the uh, Bushandra, our Gaijer. Take a look at what was done incorrectly, at what is incorrect, and change it. We're about to see our first run iatrogenic illness happen. Ruo Fahan. If we cause them to sweat. If we force a sweat out, if we emit sweat out of their body, shen zhuo ru ru, their body becomes hot like an iron. Ming yue feng wen. This is what's known as wind one or wind febrile or wind warmth. Feng wen wei bi. Wind febrile, wind warmth is an illness. Mai yin yang ju fu. The pulses, yin and yang, are both floating. Zi han chu, sweat is coming out. Shen zhong, the body is heavy. Duo mian shui, they are constantly or wanting to or frequently sleeping and tired. Bi xi bi han, the breathing through the nose must be blocked. It has that idea of just that, oh, you've got that, you know, your nose is stuffed and dry. I don't want to use the word dry, but your nose is stuffed. Yuan nan chu, Words are difficult to get out. Boy, our person is going to end up misdiagnosing because of this. If they are then purged, the urine becomes unable to come out easily. It's not easy to urinate. I meant to look up the Western term for jersh. It's when the eyes go straight ahead and the person doesn't look either way. They just go... Aka something or other. I can't remember what it was. I have a note. Look this up. And six months have gone by and I still haven't. You can look at all that up. Right? That's your job. Uh, my job is to give you the shot. <laughs> so, zhi uh, It's an illness, right? Shi so and uh, loss of bowel control. So, we had someone who had a one being. A, war, a, febrile, a febrile illness. Then they were forced to, then they were given a sweat. They were given, forced to sweat out of their body. So they became hot, and this has got a name, Feng Wen, wind febrile illness. The pulses are floating. It's still floating. Sweat's coming out. The body's heavy. They're like this. And then the nose. And Yuan Nan Chu, the words are having coming out. Yeah, I'm not thirsty. Now leave me alone. It's okay. I just need to rest. I just need to sleep. This is what this person looks like. If we cannot mimic... Everything that we're reading, we're going to misdiagnose this. We're going to misdiagnose. Because we're not going to see it when the person's doing it. Unless you're one of these photographic memory people like Dr. Lee, like these people, who have this memorized photographically. So that as they go across life and someone has these illnesses, those symptoms pop up like on a little digital screen in their brain. They say, oh, look, that's that. For the rest of us, if we cannot mimic what we see, we won't recognize it in, little, in real life. So... They've got the yuan nan chu, and so then they get purged. So there I am like this, and the doctor's like, whoa, purge, purge. Oh my goodness, after that, now I've lost the ability to urinate. I'm doing this. Eyes staring straight ahead. I'm, if, 
the urinate is not like I can do it on command, but I might lose my bowels. I might poop myself. I might urinate myself. Any of those things. And at this point, what happens? If they are then used fire upon, moxa, heat treatments, right? That's what we're talking about. Wei fa huang si. They put out a slight, and that slight's important because later on we're going to have mistreatment causing true yellow. This is just a light yellow complexion to the face. They're going to turn yellow. Uh, and looking as if they have convulsions, at time, uh, like seizures, at times full convulsion, convulsions. At this point, right, so you gave them fire and the person turns a slight yellow and starts to have like convulsions and occasionally like, oh, 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 things are going on. Now what are you going to do? Well, the next step is we're going to use Huo Xunzhi. We're going to use fire to fumigate them, which means it's the original ar- aromatherapy. You have a, an incense burner that has a shape, and you burn on the coals inside. You put in herbs. The herbs burn, turn to smoke, and you waft the smoke into the nose because the patient is too ill or too near death to be able to take herbs. This is before stomach tubes, right? So this is the final stage. And if you want to see what it looks like, uh, The Last Emperor, the movie, the very opening scenes, you have... Um, the Empress Dowager dying. And they have a panning of the room of like the opulence. And you will see next to her bed is Xun. Whoever did the research knew what they were doing because the herbs are burning and the incense herb smoke is coming out and she's breathing that. She's breathing that. It's a very powerful medicine. So at this point, we have Ruo Huo Xun Zhe. If now we... I don't want to use the word steam because that implies water. If we smoke them... I don't know. I'm going to say, if we smoke them, uh, that does not sound right. <laughs> fumigate. I'm using fumigate, but I mean, fumigate doesn't imply smoke. All right. Well, yeah. Fume. Yeah, fumigate. Smoking, right? It is. So it's coming from the Latin. So if we fumigate them, you guys have heard me say this over and over again. If you've ever been in a seminar of mine or watched me say it, to go and do something wrong once lengthens the days of illness. To do something wrong twice shortens their life expectancy. This, line six, is where my constant quote of this comes from. Think about it. They could have gotten better, but you did the wrong thing, so they're going to stay sick longer. And then, maybe you could have reversed it and got them better, but you did something wrong a second time. And now, either you kill them flat out, or when they finally recover, they're so beat up that if they were going to make it to 100, maybe they'll make it to 70. If they were only going to make it to 70, maybe they're going to stop at 60. You've shortened their expectancy because now they're running on damage in the organs or deficiency inside the body from your treatment and not the illness. But what's everyone going to say? Gosh, you know, I had that pneumonia back in 62 and I never recovered. Gosh, oh, it was the doctor, not the pneumonia. That's what he's talking about here. So before I go on my rant on this, uh, let's talk, let's see what Chung Woo-ji says. And uh, this is a huge passage. And so we have in terms of text, if we're looking at it, um, we start here and the big characters is the original. So it's big, big, big. And then these little teeny characters that are double line. So it's two characters per line, right? So we have two characters per line and it goes one, two, three, four. It's almost an entire page of commentary of teeny characters doubled up. This is a huge passage for everyone who studies the Shanghai line six. Um, Shanghai, Fa Hai. So, if there's damage by cold, we can sweat. And it's so important to understand. We think when we, someone has a Shanghai illness and we give them Ma Huang Tang, that they're going to warm up. But actually, if you read the classics, they all say, Shanghai, you give them sweating, and their body goes cool. They were expecting heat. You're suffering from heat, even though you have the aversion to cold. So the body's hot to the touch. You give them ma huang tang, and the body cools to the touch. Even though on the inside, you will feel warm. I'm talking about the touch here. Okay? Don't confuse that. I mean, 
uh, having had three children, it is so easy to touch a child and think, oh, have a fever, and want to go immediately to fever medicine. <laughs> it's perceived hot and cold, not touch hot and cold. And we've got a line coming to talk about that. So, their body should feel cool after we sweat them. And if, if we create sweating, their body goes hot like an iron. Fei Shanghan, it wasn't damaged by cold. Wei Feng Wen Ye, this is wind warmth, wind febrile. Feng Shang Yu Shang, wind damages the top of the body. Our Yang Shou Feng Qi, and the Yang receives the wind Qi. Feng Yu Wen Xiang He, wind and warmth or febrile have combined together, Zi Shang Wei and they are together damaging the way. It's the damages at the way level. So, yin yang, uh, mai yin yang ju fu. So therefore, we know what the pulses should be if the damages, damages at the way level, the way yin level. It's yin and yang pulses are both floating. Zi han chu zhe, sweat is coming out. Wei shou xie ye, if, it's on, if they're able to sweat, it is the way, the upright qi that has received the pernicious. There's nothing about them being cold. The sweat indicates where it is, that the upright qi has it. Weijie qi ye. The upright, it is qi ye. It is, it is qi. Feng zi shang wei. Wind, it damages the wei, the upright. Wen zi shang qi. The warm febrile, it damages the qi. So if the qi is damaged, I'm adding this, if qi is damaged, shen zhong duo mian shui zhe. The body is heavy, and they constantly want to sleep, be asleep. Wei shou feng wen. The, the upright layer has received uh, wind febrile, wind warmth, and the qi has become hun. And that hun is the idea of being unclear, of being passed out, of being on there. And so when we see the fatigue, the body heaviness, not what? Not pain not vomiting, we're not seeing stiffness. There was nothing in there about heaviness, about fatigue, when we had the wind cold or cold. But the moment we start seeing this, the warmth has started damaging the qi itself, and the person has body heaviness. There's not enough qi, so the body feels heavier. Julianne's going to talk about the Shandong Ban Sao, and we take upper herbs to lighten ourselves, to help our qi. So therefore, by nature, if good is light, then bad is heavy. And this is what we have. So, bi xi bi han. The breathing through the nose has the blocked sound. Yuan nan chu zhe. The language is hard to come out. Speaking is hard to come out. Feng wen. Wind febrile. Why? On the outside is deep. So it's not deep in the body. It's severe. It's really, really got the complete outside layer. It's not just bothering it a little bit. It's got a severity to it that we're talking about that. Shun, deep. But please don't, when I use the word deep, don't think the English word deep into the body. Right? Our qi yong And thus the qi, it becomes blocked or trapped and doesn't move with flowness, with freeness. Ruo bei xia zhe. If this person, so they have these symptoms, if this person is purged, zi sha zang qi. Then we're going to damage the qi of the zang, of the organs. So there they were. They had it on the surface. And the upright qi, as bad as it may look or as warm as they may feel, it wasn't too serious. And then we purge them. And the qi, which was being damaged, weakened by the warmth, is now going into the organs. And the organs qi themselves is about to be damaged. And... The best way to understand this is, like I said, if we can't mimic or see this in nature, then something's wrong. And nobody is excited to go out and chop wood or be very active on a hot summer day. Lethargy is the word of summer. Napping in the hammock, in the shade, is like the fantasy idea. I'm in the palm trees, I've got my little hammock and my little umbrella drink, and the last thing I want to do is anything that causes my heart rate to go up. 
Because if I get my chi moving, I'm going to be hot on top of the hot, and I'm going to be exhausted. And if I do too much, I'm going to end up zhong shu, struck by heat, that summer heat. And so everyone, when there's heat, our chi is both weaker and we're protective of it by not wanting to do much. Lethargy of summer. Dog days, the dog days. Nobody wants to do anything. So that's happening in our body because of a pernicious warmth inside. So the zhang qi has been hit. From We've heard this zhang qi. Taiyang pang guang jing. The taiyang bladder channel. Hold on, it's tricky with these little lines. Nei jing yue. So here we have our first, the nei jing states. So the nei jing says, pang guang bu li wei long. Uh, the bladder, if it is not free, moving, able to urinate, this is what's known as, as um, long in Chinese, which is urinary blockage. If it's untrapped, this is what's known as leakage. So the bladder can suffer from two illnesses, the inability to pee or the inability to lock it in. So we have leakage or urination. Now, uh, now, so for those whose urine is blocked, this is what's meant by not free. The channel, the pathway of the Taiyang, the Taiyang channel. right? So it starts on the inside of the eye. If the, the Neijing states, if the pupils are big or high, Tai. The Taiyang channel is not full. Um, if the eyes are kind of pulled in, then the Taiyang is near exhaustion, uh, extinction, completely used up. The urine will not be free. They're looking straight ahead. Loss of bowel control. Uh, Wei Xiao. This all shows up after being purged downward. What have we done? We've used up. We've jie jin ye. We've used up all of the jin ye, the fluids of the body. And thus, sun zang qi. Damaged the zang qi. Feng wen wai. Uh, this, the, uh, the feng wen, the, warm, the wind warmth, it has gone to the outside. And what does this classic say? We're looking at a possible extermination. It's been all used up. Wei nan difficult to treat. So we had someone who had an illness, and then we purged them. And if it's this bad that they're 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 looking straight ahead, their bowels they've lost control, they have all of these problems. It's now difficult to treat. We have taken something that was treatable, and we've made it difficult to treat. Now let's make the next mistake. If we use fire upon them, the fire is going to help the wind febrile turn into greater heat, turn more heat. So, um, with this heat, so this heat is going to be enough that the person starts to turn yellow. That yellow is the heat and the fluids have already been dried up so now we have dried up fluids and then heat on top of it so the person starts to turn that light yellow and convulsions Russian because what happens is you had an exterior wind warmth that was on the surface we then drove it in and in the driving in we damaged the fluids and then in this circumstance, like the summer where there's been no rain and we've got all of this grass and really hot, dry weather because there's no rain, there's no fluids in the body because we purged it, then we add fire. Forest fire. What happens when a forest fire happens? It generates wind. And so wind came in with heat. We made it worse, drove it in, and then we added fire to this. And now we're going to create internal wind. That's the convulsions. So, um, need a little mar finger marker here. So we've got that. So it comes in, they're turning yellow, and they've got the convulsions. 
when heat is very deep, very severe, this starts to generate wind, and it looks like convulsions or seizures, and at times is quite serious. So at this point, uh, we can say that this using of fire was our first mistake, big mistake. It's going to really make it very bad. If on top of this, we next use fumigation, this is a second mistake. What the going wrong once lengthens the time of the illness that they'll get better, and they don't get better quickly. And then if we're if we go again, we go against it, we go the wrong direction again, we're going to put them in a very dangerous place. Thus, it states, we are hastening the expectancy of their lives. Huge passage, because we have the introduction of what happens. And then we might think, intellectually, it's easy to say, well, why would you do that? But I had the fortune with being with first Professor Wong, then Dr. Xie, and Dr. Li, and some of the other doctors that I didn't, I can't say I was their students, but I spent time with. I got to see some really sick people. And the first thing that happens with really sick people is you get flustered. If you don't have an internal practice, if you aren't used to it, then the moment something is really ill and the person is writhing on the ground, or their pants are soiled and things are leaking out, or there's vomit coming out of their mouth, or there's blisters, or their eyes, or they're seizing in front of you, it takes quite a lot of experience or you have to be able to hold your chi down to be able to look at that and not get confused by the symptoms, let alone run away or just call 911 and have nothing to do with the situation. But that was not available back then. Right? So once an illness gets pretty bad or is very sudden or seems big, it's really easy to misdiagnose or second guess. And I don't want to say the biggest danger because the biggest danger is to get it completely wrong. But what a lot of people do is they try and cover themselves and they do a bit of both, not allowing either to get better, whatever happens. So we have our person who was sick and we missed the fact that the pulse was floating. We assumed it was a yangming because they had heat and thirst and no aversion to cold. Heat, thirst, no aversion to cold, sweat, everything except for the pulse. The pulse was floating. And so we assume the heat was in the Yangming layer from those symptoms and the brainwashing we've had that there's cold and cold is Taiyang. And we purge them. Maybe we give them Chang Chi Tang. Maybe we give them uh, purging pills. Whatever we give them, we do that. And the next thing you know, the illness is pulled right into the body with the downward motion of the herbs and purging damages the yin. It damages the fluids. So now the system is running dry and hot. All right, that was bad enough. We're going to have a whole lot of that. So now what happens? Why on earth would in any situation would you consider in a person like that using fire, moxa? Right? Why? I mean, come on. You've just done that, and they've got this heat. The problem is that you purge them. They had this, but the next thing you know, I'm sorry, you sweated them, right? So you sweated them, and now they're all hot. And you miss the fact that... Uh, let's back up. So uh, we have to first sweat them. So you sweat them when you shouldn't have sweat them. The body gets all hot. And now you're thinking it's really, really hot. You miss the floating pulse, so you purge them. Okay? Now, um, you purge them, and the next thing you know, they've lost control of their bowels, and their eyes are staring straight. Well, if you're not careful and you know your theory only sort of, and then you get confused in emergency medicine situations, the shun is gone. The eyes, right? There's no communication with you, and they've lost their bowels. Well, isn't that kidney? Isn't that kidney yang? Isn't that shun? And don't we have to return the yang? What am I, how am I going to return the yang in this patient, right? I screwed up. I gave them purging medicines, and now they're like this. Right? It's like the person is just like trying to turn into a raisin because everything's going out them. I got to save their yang. That's what I'm seeing. I got to get their kidneys. I got to strengthen things back up. Fastest way, moxa. That's what that person saw. That's what the doctor saw. Why would he make that mistake? Because the person was in loss of control. 
And we've been brainwashed. Kidneys, loss of control, yang problem. We gotta do save the yang. Return the yang, return the yang, return the yang. Luckily, we can't get herbs in this person. Otherwise, people would try and shove foods in there and really mess things up, okay? So we mox the heck out of them. And now the mox's heat has dried up even further and the person turns yellow. Now that's, that's hot. That's, like a, that's not the spleen yellow of like I'm feeling deficient. This is like jaundice yellow. But there's no damp in there. It's a different, it's a very light yellow. It's like there's no complexion, there's no moisture anymore. So everything turns this yellow, all right? So now they've turned yellow and they've got convulsions. So you couldn't get medicine in, but at least you could do moxa. Now you can't even do moxa because they're thrashing all over the place. So what are you going to do? You're going to get those very aromatic herbs, the ones that open the brain, that do all the things we use for concussion, for bringing people back, and you're going to burn it. And they're all very scattering herbs. They're fragrant herbs. They're like, so you have a person who's got these convulsions and you're thinking, oh, look, I got to somehow let the convulsions go, let them relax. And now they're just, they're shot. So it's easy. If I was in this situation, there's no guarantee I wouldn't make these mistakes. Now I won't because I have a loop in here, like just when you think. And so unless we have a loop to catch ourselves and say, let's not treat the obvious. Uh, those of you who've been with me before, you hear me say that the most important thing I do when I diagnose is I get my first diagnosis, my first hit of what's going on, and then I spend time trying to prove myself wrong. I don't look for more symptoms. I don't try and confirm what I see. The first thing I do is try and prove what I saw wrong. And if I can't, I'll continue in my vein until I can or until I know I have a pretty confident diagnosis. But I don't go, oh, look at that, I see this, and then I run with it. Because if you run with the first thing you see, you will always be able to find information that supports it or convince yourself that it's enough to go on. But if you always stop and say, wait a minute, line six, Shanghai Lun warns me that I'm going to run with these symptoms, miss something, and make it much worse. Pull back, look carefully. What do I know?